Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Ox Talk. Thanks for uh, tuning into the show today. Appreciate you guys uh, liking these videos, hitting the thumbs up button for me. Uh, let's keep sharing the videos with as many people as you can think of sharing these videos with. Uh, very important, very crucial times right now. If you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. It uh, means a lot. We're growing this channel. I want to share with you an article I just saw in the last uh, hour or so that came on the Zero Hedge. And it talks about, and we, we discuss often on this channel about the uh, personal debt that consumers are carrying right now. And we talk about the national debt uh, and how our government now is paying, what, over a trillion dollars a year uh, just to service the uh, interest on the national debt. And I have seen some comments on some of the videos that say, look, you know, uh, people pattern themselves off of the same thing uh, that the federal government's doing, which is just running up debt, right? Uh, just needlessly spending, uh, mindlessly spending. So this, I thought, was a very interesting article, which talks about the level of debt that the individual states carry, okay? And this won't surprise you, but I want to share it uh, with all of you. And please leave your comments below and let me know what you think. The, uh, the article's entitled, Waste of the Day. States are $811, $811 billion in debt. Top line, America's 50 state governments will need an extra $811 billion, it says, to pay off their current debt. According to the annual State of the States report from Truth in Accounting, it says, key facts, state governments had $2.9 billion in debt and only $2.1 trillion in assets at the end of fiscal year 2023. Truth in Accounting, a nonpartisan organization that promotes fiscal transparency and accountability found the gap will need to be covered by guess who? Taxpayers sometime in the future. It says 27 states have what they call taxpayer burdens, meaning their budget's not balanced and they would need to collect at least $900 from every person in the state to eliminate their debt. Massachusetts, Illinois, New Jersey, and Connecticut received a letter grade of F for fail because they would need over 20, listen to this, would need over $25,000 from every resident to pay their bills. Only 23 states had what Truth in Accounting called a taxpayer surplus, meaning they could pay off all of their debt and still have money to return to their taxpayers. Four states received a grade of A because they have a taxpayer surplus above $10,000. And that is North Dakota, Alaska, Wyoming, and Utah. Unfunded pension liabilities contributed $840 billion to the debt. It says states have promised to eventually pay pensions to teachers, firefighters, uh, police officers and more, but have only saved up to 70% of the necessary cash. And guys, comment below what you think on these pensions. Uh, are, are many of these pensions going to be available uh, when these people get to retirement age? If you're collecting a pension now, I'd love to hear uh, your comments, your input. Uh, other post-retirement benefits are underfunded by $493 billion, it says. They mostly consist of lifetime health care plans, for which states have saved up only 14% of the money they've promised to current employees. Researchers wrote, uh, it says, unfortunately, some elected officials have used portions of the money owed to pensions and OPEB funds to keep taxes low and pay for politically popular programs. This is similar to charging earned benefits to a credit card without having to pay the money to pay off the debt, which obviously is impossible. Underreporting pension liabilities is just one accounting trick, it says. Politicians use to falsely claim their budgets are balanced, according to Truth in Accounting. Some states also overstate their revenue, count borrowed money as income, and more. It says every state... Uh, law has, or every, excuse me, every state has a law requiring their budget to be balanced except for Vermont. And it says search all state and local government salaries and vendor spending with AI search bot Benjamin at openthebooks.com. Summary, the national debt makes headlines, and we just discussed this constantly, 
but the fiscal problems at the state level cannot be ignored. Um, I did not, I should have Googled uh, what the debt is in the state of California. I'm sure that uh, California uh, received, well, it wasn't on the, on, on the fail list, but it's got to probably be on the, uh, the D list, I, I would imagine. Uh, but, you know, you guys come below, you know, we have these unfunded pensions and all these liabilities. Uh, the states are faring evidently, um, you know, many of the states, uh, you know, not much worse uh, than the federal government. And we know how many trillions of dollars uh, the federal government is running and what the yearly deficit is now. I did a video on that a few days ago. So, guys, a short one today. I thought that would be interesting for you to hear. Again, the focus is always at the federal level, but many of these states, again, comment uh, you know, what state you're in. Many of these states are poorly managed, uh, mismanaged. Uh, we have a lot of political agendas out there, depending on uh, the state and what's happening and dipping into. You know, we always hear about uh, you know, the hand in the cookie jar, uh, you know, and some of these politicians uh, are, are, you know, are obviously uh, putting their hand in the cookie jar and they're robbing from Peter to pay Paul, right? Uh, they're doing what is politically expedient or politically correct or maybe uh, what they feel they have to do uh, to get elected again, right? Uh, and stay in their position and preserve their position, position of power. But what it does is when you hear those numbers, some of the states uh, would need to collect $25,000 from each taxpayer just to balance their budget. Uh, it's uh, pretty eye-opening. So I'll leave it there today. I did see that the stock market took a bit of a beating today, as well as the metals, gold and silver, uh, were down uh, substantially. I saw cryptos also down. Uh, everything sold off. What went up was the dollar. The U.S. dollar index uh, is almost at 105. That's about as high as I've seen it in a long time. Uh, the Watch that 10-year uh, bond yield. Uh, it, it hit four and a quarter today. Uh, I think it touched four and a quarter and backed off. I'm not sure uh, where it closed. But when you have a uh, bond market sending those kind of signals and you have a dollar strengthening like this, uh, you may see, again, not uh, trading advice, financial advice, economic advice, but you may see continued pressure on the stock market. I, you know, I figured, I shared this on the last couple of videos, that metals needed to have take a breather. I needed to pull back a bit. Uh, when you have a dollar, actually, the last you know weeks and months, metals have been uh, been running up consistently along with the dollar. Hopefully, today is just a minor aberration, and we'll see. Uh, we know a lot of powers that be do not want to see uh, spot uh, silver, especially spot silver and spot gold, uh, to be like a runaway train. So everyone, keep focused. Uh, we're what, 12 days away from the election here. A lot is going on. And uh, again, I appreciate you guys watching, sharing, liking, and subscribing. Have a great rest of your day. I'll talk to all of you soon. Bye.